I'm Alex from the GDG cast, and joining me today is... Uh, hi, I'm Ruben. Hi, I'm Ruben. also yeah. part of the GDG council. Yeah, hi, Ruben. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty all right. I've just got an assignment to do, which I am bloody dreading at the moment. It's painful. We all know that feeling. Yeah, well, I think everyone knows that feeling this day and age. Um, but, so... Um, the reason I wanted to talk to you is you were doing a remaster of Ico last I heard. I don't know if you've changed that or anything, but uh, yeah, just tell us about that. What what inspired okay, you to um, do that? Well, uh, one of my favorite games to play was uh, Shadow of the Colossus, right? Yeah, yeah, I, f I know Everyone. that feeling. Yeah, and uh, that's a well, a PlayStation Two game, right? Mm. And uh, well, at least at these days, PlayStation Two doesn't look too good. Yeah, but, um, I think, didn't, didn't they get a remaster then? As they, um... Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what I played. I played the remaster, right? And uh, it was pretty crazy just to see how, how good it looked through yeah. like another another lens, just to, you know, see it in modern times. Yeah. Because that's a really fantastic looking game. Yeah, it is. It's, great and, to, it's a great game to play too, not just fantastic to look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, I fell in love with Shadow of Colossus, and mm. also it's a prequel, Ico. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Um, uh, Ico, Ico, I can't really remember. Yeah, yeah Ico. Uh, Ico is sometimes good. Um, and so Ico, Ico hasn't received a remaster despite being an older game. Yeah. So I wanted to see, as a sort of a proof of concept, what I, what I could do on my own to uh, mm. to port it to PC and just see what, what I could fiddle with. Because okay. once you have once you have it on PC, you can do anything you want to it, really. <laughs> that is all of every single model, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. So I, first, I downloaded a copy of the ROM. Yeah. And had a look inside, and uh, did some digging into how the game stores its files. Okay. Such as um, the models used in the game, textures. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff. And it, it took a while because it's like barely information on the internet. But after some digging, I found some useful, useful descriptors about how how the models are stored. Yeah. And that was my starting point. So Ico, uh, Ico stores its models as quite as quite in quite a common sort of format. So mm. it stores a whole bunch of uh, vertices and the faces that connect them. All in sort of raw binary formats. Okay. So, so I built a um. So what I did, I got a uh, Python. I built a Python script. Oh. To go in, look at the file, look at the header of it. Yeah. And that that contains all the information about it. It goes through all the different vertices and exports them into a computer readable format called a OBJ file. Yeah. And so it'll go through dump all the vertices and stuff. And then, well, slowly, slowly I started to work up to get the models working. At first, they were just a big mess of corruption. So obviously, there was something wrong, but yeah. slowly I, I figured out more and more and just experimented with... I just made assumptions about the file types because it was still missing quite a lot of information. Yeah, okay. And I, I remember one day I was... I had a character model from the game and I wanted to see what it looked like. And all it... All it did was just render a foot, like <laughs> it, it spat out a foot, like a human foot. Was it at and least then I was... a was it at least like a proper foot, or was it one of those super deformed ones that barely looks like a foot? No, it was a proper foot. It was really detailed, but obviously it wasn't the whole model. So I was yeah. like, okay, something's wrong there. But but it was really cool just seeing that foot. That was like my first. Wow, you know, I got it working. <laughs> so eventually, I, I got through, got all the all the models done so that all the all of them works pretty much yeah. consistently yeah it must be quite complex because I, I remember not not just like from a um doing it but like from developing the game what i remember of ico is like it was quite a a unique game it's basically a long escort mission over a period of seven uh, over a period of hours yeah yeah it, you don't really have any other option other than being an escort yeah but it's not even the gameplay I really liked about Ico. It's just the um, the art direction and the mm. and sound, and music, and all that. Just, oh yes, uh, gameplay-wise, I think Shadow of the Colossus is way superior. Yeah, probably. 
Yeah, and even, even Shadow of the Colossus, like, it's... I, li I like playing the game, but I like looking at stuff more, like, the vast mm. landscapes and all that, and that's what really inspired me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think Ico is a great-looking game, and it's really, it's really mysterious-looking. Yeah, I know. Like, it always feels like there's something around the corner that you can never really yeah. quite look at. Yeah, the like, same, with, um, same with Shadow of the Colossus. I remember when I yeah, got yeah. to the, uh, not final boss fight, but it was, um, I can't remember if it's the third, it's the guy with the big fuck-off swords. Or the um, or, or the basically the tower that is masquerades as a sword, and I just remember looking at that. I was like, "Holy shit! I passed this guy so many times," and it's like, but I didn't even realize it, which was kind of cool. Yeah, and Shadow Class is such a great game. To to such a big scope was pulled off really well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think like all of those games, I have not played uh, The Last Guardian, but all yeah, of those either. games seem to have like a um, idea, which is basically here is a particular element of the video game formula. So like in the case of Ico, it was the escort mission. And yeah. in the case of like Shadow of the Colossus, it's boss fights. And it's like how yeah, can yeah. you play with that and what's your expectations for it? Because both of them are pretty simple games conceptually. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, not, they, they do those really well. Yeah, they don't. Mm. They don't exactly have like a lot of um, complexity to them, but they just do what they do very, very well. Yeah. So where are you at with the project at the moment? So I would. Um... So so after after I got the models working, I had to do the textures because yeah. I because all the models were completely grey, which was kind of boring. <laughs> so I looked at how the textures were stored, and they're stored really similarly to a, a bitmap on. On how how we would store it today. Okay. So it's just slightly different, but I was able to figure it out and then build a converter that converted it to a to a PNG image format. And originally, I did it from straight to a straight from the original file to bitmap. Okay. But the thing is, with bitmaps, is uh they can't store transparency, which is annoying because Ico stores transparency in its textures. So um, decided to redo it all as PNGs instead. Yeah. So then I had uh, all the models and all the textures, and then I was able to combine them using another script. That sounds like it was a lot of work. Yeah, it took, a, it took maybe a month to... Oh, not really. No, not, not hard work, just in three periods and stuff and work on it. Okay. And then, so, so the final... Finally, I had a... Had, you know, fully model, uh, fully textured models, which is really neat. And the models also contains all the levels, so you yeah. can see see inside everything and look for any hidden secrets. But there, there really weren't any hidden secrets in the game. Yeah, the, um, yeah it's not Dark Souls. You don't, I don't think um, you can really say, like, oh, this is going to be... It's got... Um, uh, we can find bo scrapped boss fights or whatever in those games. Yeah, yeah, like like some of those, you have, there's all sorts of secret stuff, but I yeah. couldn't really have anything like that, sadly. But, um, so after that, I did a small test about recreating, you know, um, the first couple levels in Unity. Okay. So I animated I some of the play models. I, oh, it was, it's okay. I, I didn't get too much done, but it was, it was more about the experience of proof of concept with a, a remaster could have been done if with enough manpower. Do you think so I just could... made, probably, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But, um, I mean, I guess well, I guess not really a long game. There's not too much to do, so you could you could theoretically do it with a few people. Yeah. So I made the first level, made the character move around and stuff. Oh, sadly, I couldn't get animations working. I couldn't figure out the file structure because no one had ever, or no one had ever looked at the file structure for animations, and I couldn't work it out either. Okay. So basically, do it, it, was a, it was a solo project. You work, weren't working yeah, yeah. with anyone. I wasn't working with anyone. Yeah, you didn't have any yeah. sort of like information from the web or anything like that. Yeah. Um, only only a little bit for how the models were stored, which someone had attempted to do before, but not very well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, if I wanted to do more of it, I could have. If if I was more experienced in reverse engineering. Uh, there's debug copies of Ico, which you can look at the functions being called, and then you could theoretically find functions loading in animation data 
yeah. and then look at how those work. But that's sort of, it, it would take more time than I was really interested in. And also is bloody hard because <laughs> assembly is yeah. pretty hard to look at if you're not experienced with it like I wasn't. Yeah, so I made some of my own animations for the main character okay. so he could walk around and stuff. And it's actually pretty awful to animate stuff. I, can, like, I, character I haven't model. done that stuff yet. I probably need to because I'm trying to work out how to code properly. But, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's annoying to do the Blender. But I got some pretty pretty simple animations and had the character walking around and pulling switches and stuff for the first level. So I was happy with that. Okay. And that's and that's what I kind of finished up. Um, I made I made the first level and stuff, and I was happy with how it looks. And and basically, yeah, if if someone were to do a remaster, you could just take all those models, polish them up, whatever you wanted to do. More, uh, yeah. And textures were pretty low resolution, so those those could easily be fixed up. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was where I wanted to be with it. I, I ported the first part to PC and it works, so it's happy. Yeah, so yeah, that's it for that. Okay, so um, what are you doing at the moment? Do you have um, any projects or are you just like... Yeah, planning? yeah, I've started another project. Oh, what is it? That I've... Okay, um, I think just recently in the news, have you heard um, Mario 64 has been ported to the PC? I have. By... Oh, okay. Well, oh. um, I did not know that in the slightest. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, Mario sixty four is obviously a Nintendo sixty four game, mm. and Nintendo, I'm sure, is definitely not interested in porting uh, their games to PC because yeah, I don't obviously think, they want. I think that that's one of the things that was never going to happen. Yeah, yeah, because like, they you want can their kind of come out among Demon's Souls getting a remaster. That's not that's not something that's ever going to happen uh -huh. in our lifetime. Demon's Souls might get a remaster. I doubt uh, it's it, from the sounds of it, it was a copyright mess, so I sincerely doubt it. That being said, I would love to be proved wrong. Yeah, so well, obviously the the Mario sixty four we have only runs on the N sixty four that yeah. consumers can get, and well, the, the N sixty four is a very different machine to a, a PC. Mm. Um, and so Mario sixty four is well, the, the copy we have, we can look at it, and it's all in uh, MIPS assembly. Okay. Which is, which is pretty awful to look at, yeah. and it, you know it's it's incompatible with anything, with the PC. So you can't really hmm. do anything. So um, people have made. Oh, the one thing we can do with the Mitsu Assembly though is we can emulate it on a PC. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah, yeah emulate is great. Games for... these days emulation because it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I am not buying like a PS One off Trade Me and going. Exactly. To, oh, oh yeah, I can. I now get to play Xeno Gear, which is going to cost me like another fifty bucks to get off <laughs> if I'm lucky. Yeah. It's like it's pretty awful, but uh, emulation has its drawbacks off because you have a lot of overhead to emulate the system it's mm. it's running on, and that can cause slowdowns. Um, it's also very hard to mod games when they're still in a when they're still in assembly format. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's not the best way to have a game. Okay. But you, the best way to have a game is if it, if you have the source code, right? Yeah. So for games like Doom from the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, uh, didn't they make it, that public, the source code? Yeah, it's software made the source code public, right? Yeah. And there are now now there are hundreds of mods, thousands of mods for yeah, Doom. Yeah, like you had stuff like the Do Mario Doom or whatever it was. Where yeah, like... yeah, and Brutal Doom is one of the most awesome Doom mods. So, yeah. so then people have, um, you know, made completely new renderers for it and everything, so you can run it in 4K and all that at super high frame rates, yeah. which is that that is. In the final one, we want a game to be because it is completely open to the community to take full advantage and and future proof it. For yeah, everyone. and especially when like you think of certain games, especially like old Nintendo ones. I mean, no one's going to be using the bloody thing ever. No one's remastering it. No one's reusing it. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's like why wouldn't you like open up for the community to mod to hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the problem is we we only have the we don't have the the assembly code when we want the source code. So how can we get the source code? Well, uh, 
you, you can run assembly code. If you find the original compiler that the game used, you can write your own source code, and the compiler will spit out the compiled code. Okay. And since we already have the compiled code, we can pretend to be writing for, say, Mario. So we'll write some source code. And if the assembly code that the, that the compiler spits out matches, we know that's the original code that the, the programmers wrote back 20 years ago, right? Yeah. So if you do that, well, people did that for the entire game of Mario. <laughs> Jesus, how much well, time do you have to have to do that? Uh, it needs, you know, I'm sure hundreds of volunteers and hours and hours of a reverse engineering that yeah. code. Okay. But, yeah, but they did it. They got the source code for Mario. So you can you can compile that code and it'll, compl- uh, it'll reproduce the exact copy of Mario the, in assembly. And then once you have the source code, right, you can then you can then mod it to health. Yeah. So first thing people did was port it to PC. Mm-hmm. And now you can find videos of people running Mario in 4K, uh, you know, high frame rates, yeah. natively on Windows without any em- without any in- emulation or anything. And that, that's going to open up Mario for the whole community to mod and alter and all that. Mm-hmm. So, so I, was, I, was, yeah. I was really inspired by uh, that whole process of getting the source code out of old games. Yeah. So I, I have joined the, uh, what is it? Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time the compilation project. If you to, can get uh, that one, if you can get that one, you'll be a hero. Yeah, yeah. So me and a lot of other people are going through the code for that that game yeah. and reverse engineering it into compilable C code. Yeah, and I'm I'm still pretty new at it, but I've I've only got got I think three functions working so far out of the whole game. <laughs> they're they're Game is tens of thousands of functions, so I've got I've got three little functions working so far. But they they compile exactly the same as the original source code into the assembled code, so they're completely perfect working C okay. code for those functions. Yeah. So yeah. if this gets completed, what do you see kind of like happening in the? Um... Oh, first thing, first thing would be a PC port of yeah. Zelda to PC. Uh, that's inevitable if if it gets. Uh, yeah, I forget. Yep. Yeah. Um, Zelda has a pretty terrible frame cap, I think, of twenty something FPS. Uh, and obviously, that people would uh, figure out how to unlock the frame rate. Hmm. Would you see that. like the same sort of fan creation that people had for Doom back in the day, like um, when they were just? Because I can't remember hmm. what it is uh, other than Mario Doom. But like they just used the source code for that, and they made a better three D Mario than Sega's ever made. I I haven't heard of that. It's like yeah, they were just like um, where like they made this um ridiculously over the top three D version. Of, uh, not Mario, Sonic. Sorry, Sonic that I, than Sega's uh, ever made. Okay, I think I heard that. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. I remember. Like, I remember looking at that, and I was like, "What? How? Why? What? Um." Uh, how did this happen, and why is it better than everything that Sega's put out in the last few years? Yeah. I mean, that, that's uh, that's still a, well, a fan game. So, mm. Yeah, the thing is, if you ever want to recreate a game on, on PC, uh, you have to build it. You have to build it from scratch, basically. Like yeah. like what I was doing with uh, Ico. Mm. I, I was never happy with exactly how it uh, played, because I could never get the camera working quite right as it did in the game. The graphics weren't quite right. The lighting wasn't quite right. The movement wasn't quite right. I was just, I was never. It's never going to be quite as good as the original. Yeah. So yeah. So if, but, once you get this done, do you? Um, do, so I'm not really into these communities. So I'm I'm speaking as a layman here. Um, how big are they for the most part? Another Zelda one. Let me have a look at the people in the Discord. I mean, not all of these are volunteers, but yeah. Uh, well, it's 250 online right now. That's and impressive. Oh, 680 offline. So, uh, so some of them will be people contributing. Yeah. 130 will give or take. Uh, the GitHub has 419 commits and 21... Con- oh, only 21 contributors. So it's not really that many. Okay. Yeah, so I guess the Discord is mainly for people just looking at it. Yeah. 
Because I, um, I, I stick around the ROM communities. I can't program for shit at the moment, and I can't translate. But mm -hmm. like one of the big projects at the moment is um, a guy doing uh, localizing like an, a Japanese game called uh, Giran's Greed. Yeah. And I and like that is a mountain of work from the looks of things because it's like going through all the uh, the um, program and just uh, replacing the English with uh, replacing the Japanese with English, which is a uh, Painful from the sounds of things, because okay. like the UI and all that. It's like, that, that's like a that's a ROM hack, right? Yeah, ROM hack. Yeah, yeah I can't okay. imagine like how bad that must be for a um, for like a normal for doing that for PC, because that just sounds awful. Yeah. Um, is that right? I can show the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, I don't. We don't have a visual here, so uh. Probably, okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No. Um, Oh, it's a cool project if people are interested in assembly. Okay. They can they contribute. I can show them the ropes if they want to learn. Yeah, right. yeah, I think people would be quite interested in that, to be honest, because I think, I think a big thing with game design is it's quite a... a I wouldn't say... Misinterpreted, I would say, profession. Uh -huh. Like, um... Like, I think that a lot of people go into it with, like, the wrong sort of expectation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, they see something like Undertale and go, oh, I could make that. Mm hmm and Yeah, then, yeah. It's like, no, I'm... you probably couldn't. Not on your first try. I don't know if I'm even into sort of game creation. Because <laughs> I can never create anything original. I just like working with other people's stuff and fixing it up. And... Okay. And, like, emulation and all that. Emulation and porting stuff. I find that more interesting. I find assembly code the most interesting out of all of it, to be honest. Yeah. I think I think assembly code's crazy that all the information for a program is sitting right there, but the only thing stopping you from looking into it and figuring out all the secrets of a program is just or experience and time. Hmm. And understanding being able to figure out what it's doing. Okay, I find yeah. that Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so if people, so if people don't really like the high-level programming, like Unity and all that. You know, I'd, I'd recommend getting into low-level game. I don't know, not design. Uh, research, game research. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I've noticed with games over the uh, years, especially, is. I'm not saying they're, going to, they're becoming more casualized, but I think they're becoming a lot easier to use. Especially like when you compare like old school RPGs, so they're much more modern ones. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of just a... Uh, I, I don't want to say it's better. <laughs> Those old school RPGs. Oh, depends. There's, there's a difference between easy to use and how in-depth they are. Yeah, it's like, yeah I think like... Um, I'm trying to think of the right example. Like, I think... When you like compare like Bethesda RPGs to the uh, newer stuff, it's a bit. Yeah, Bethesda RPGs are pretty shit. <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. They're they're go they're goddamn garbage. Like, yeah. They they, they are, like it's the one thing I really hate. I'm a big sucker for like mechanics in gameplay. Yeah. Like I'm a huge um, so I'm a big RPG nut. As I love like, oh. You can I can use this character in a specific way and get this kind of effect. Uh -huh. Whereas like with Bethesda RPGs, one the stories are absolute dog shit ninety nine percent of the time. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. And two, it's like they've got no real stakes. I would say the best way to describe it, they've got no. Re they've got, <laughs> the stories are awful. And I can't really care about any of the characters. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what I find. Um, it's I don't I forgot the word for it. It's like being able to feel like you're in the game, kind of immersion, believable. Immersion, yeah. Immersion, yeah, immersion. I'm a sucker for immersion. Yeah, I'm actually. Yeah. I've been I've been playing um what Fallout One and Two. Yeah, same here. I've loved those games. Oh yeah, I love Fallout One. Yeah, for, so one for Steam, uh, off Steam. Yeah, but like they're, they're, when you like look at those and compare those to the uh, like three and four, they are so much better. I know, I know. Like yeah, because it's, the, yeah, it's, it's not like the graphics or anything or, or how big the open world is. It's just how how, how solidly 
how in depth it is. Uh, yeah, how in depth and how well thought out it all is. Mm. It just feels like you're in the world of Fumo. Yeah, it, uh, I, and like it, one of my favorite, um, well, not favorite, I absolutely despise it. One of my least favorite things in Fallout is how you can literally talk enemy commanders out of things. <laughs> and it's like, no! What? That makes no logical sense. Yeah. If you could be defeated by rational arguments, you would have been defeated already. Yeah. Like, you can't tell me that no one in before me has gone around to you and said, listen, you guys are fucking lunatics. <laughs> did, um, did you finish all that one? I am fi in the process of finishing it. I'm... Oh, okay. So the, the final final character is probably the best one in the game. I know, I know the, uh, because I was spoiled because, you know, internet. Yeah. Uh, I know what the twist is. I know what the character is. Yeah, the master. Yeah, the master, yeah. yeah. But uh, and I know how to defeat, I know how to technically win, if that's yeah. what you want to do. Mm. But, like, I'm just going on my own adventure. Because that's the thing with Fallout, um, with the first Fallout. You don't need to immediately win, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, same with uh, new Fallout. So mm. wow, I always get too distracted to really focus on the yeah. story on like new ones. Yeah, one of my um, favorite one, one of my favorite new RPGs actually that just came out was Disco Elysium. I don't know if you played that yet. No, I haven't played that. It is one. It is probably reminiscent enough of like the old Fallout's and things like that that it's really enjoyable. Because uh -huh. basically, the yeah. idea is you play as a drunk hobo cop. Yeah. Who is solving a case, and you go, and then you just go completely, and then you the story is pretty much what you think is um, is like oh your character thinks this this and this, um, what are you gonna do? And that's literally that's literally the plot. Like there's just a is literally oh I start here and then I go from here to here. It's great. It's like you know. So really, a, it gives you a lot of free choice. Oh yeah, a lot of free choice. A lot of uh -huh. yeah. And I and I think that's like what most Fallout game, most RPGs in general, I think, are missing, is like they confuse an open world with free choice. Yeah, I, I find. Well, have you played The Witcher Three? Um, I have played a bit of it. I haven't finished it yet, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I haven't finished it. I don't know if I will. Um, I, I find that game like it's the most linear feeling RPG ever. <laughs> it's, it's actually. Well, usually in RPG, you get a lot of free choice about how you want to approach stuff. In, in Witcher, it's like you use your Witcher senses to follow the trail. Yeah. Talk to this guy. Do this. Follow this person in a long cutscene down this hall. Fight this creature. I don't know. I just don't like Witcher Three. <laughs> it just feels so so off-putting to play. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it's all like different um, tastes and things like that. Like, yeah, w one of my favorite things to do because I'm a huge SMT dude is um, SMT. Yeah, Shin Megami Tensei, the uh, basically, oh, um, yeah. which is ba which is how I said it to my friends: is you get to punch God in the face, huh. which because uh, it, um, so it's kind of hilarious, just like how over the top it is, and like God is terrible. Mm -hmm. But no, like one of my favorite things with that is um, basic uh, is the gameplay. You've got a lot of strategies to approach something, but if you yeah. go all up, but the um, but they say they have like a rule of you cannot do this strategy because you will fail miserably. And it was a strategy I always adopted in Pokemon, which is I will have the most powerful um, attacks. I will not have anything else. Yeah. Just literally. I, I just literally the most um, just literally attack attack attack, and SMC is uh, SMT. So I'm not SMC. SMT is like yeah, that's not going to work. You actually need to rely on um, accuracy moves and buffs, uh, buffs and debuffs to win a fight. Yeah. Which I think so. It's like so. It's like good gameplay. You mean? Yeah. Like, like good proper... well thought out mechanics. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I think like, I think that's a big thing in a lot of um, RPGs that I just don't like, which is you can um, you can usually just switch to a style of gameplay, and that works for the entire game. Yeah, especially like Skyrim, like the strategy. Do not talk to me about Skyrim. I swear. 
I hate uh, that. I hate that game so much. Yeah, I always want to love it, but I can never get into it. Uh, to to me, it's just really meh. I can't think of a positive thing I would say about it. Yeah, this is better. Um, have you played The Witcher One? Yeah, I hated the combat system. I couldn't get past. Oh, it. really? Yeah. The Witcher One is probably my favorite game. The the first forty minutes for me were exceptionally painful. It's like you cannot hurt this person in this style of combat, and I was like, I'm swinging at them with a big fucking sword. That's uh, not exactly going to. That's not too bad. There's there's actually three buttons to choose from to kill them. You just have to pick the right one out of three. Yeah. No, but it's just like I don't know. It's that it's that sort of system. So I, I remember playing some like old RPGs, and I remember thinking to myself when like damage was minimal with a fire weapon or something like that mm. but I, and it was less than what I would use I'd get with a normal katana can't remember what game it was but it was like why that doesn't make any sense even if you're immune to like fire even if you're immune to fire I am still hitting you with a big sword you're yeah. not exactly walking yeah. away from that <laughs> But one one game whose combat system I actually really like at the moment is the new Final Fantasy VII. Oh, okay. I haven't played any Final Fantasy. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. I kind of never played... Oh, I'm not really. Oh, I've only ever played Western RPGs and, and Dark Souls, I guess. Yeah. Dark Souls. I think everyone in their mother's played Dark Souls at this point. Yeah. yeah. I like Dark Souls. Um, I like the first one, not really any of the others. Um, Mainly because the first one I find is really immersive. Yeah, I'm. I like three because I'm a Bloodborne fan, and I will fully admit that is my main reason. Because it <laughs> is, it feels like a fusion of one and Bloodborne. Two, I will rag on until the day I die. I hate it so much. Yeah, I, I, I got. I play a lot of two. Never finished it, but I did not enjoy my time in it. Not like, yeah, not like Dark Souls one. Yeah, my problem with two is um, sta you know how you know the staggering mechanic in one, how like when you hit someone with a big b a sword, they will yeah. uh, it will hurt regardless. To me, that's great. I love that. Um, uh -huh. So like they get staggered and stuff like that, and then I could capitalize on that. With two, we don't have you don't have that at all. It's just oh, okay. Oh, you hit me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever know. <laughs> I am unaffected by the fact you hit me with a big sword, despite the fact I am a normal-sized human being. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's... it's my thing. It's my it's my like take, which is that you, if I'm if I'm hitting you with something, you should be react. It's why I love platinum games. Is like when I hit them with something, it feels like I've actually hit them and I've actually hurt the enemy. Well, I, I, I found with Dark Souls 2, constantly you're just fighting waves, of, like, a bunch of enemies at once. Mm. And, and I got really frustrated with like, doing that. Because, I don't know, just, just being swarmed by low-level enemies is just annoying. Well, the thing not just that, I, one of the things I hated was the weapon system. I thought that was absolute gar- I thought that was how, like, the uh, things degrade super fast. Oh, really? I never found a problem with that. I, I hated that, because it was like, Oh, I'm comfortable with this style of weapon. Guess what? It's breaking. Oh, great. Um, I have, I've got nothing else. Yeah. Mm. And with, um, and the unfortunate thing is, unless you're start, and when you're starting with, um, Barbarian, in, not Barbarian, um, I think, no, not Barbarian, can't remember the, what it's called. But where you're starting out at level one to like one stat for uh, one deprived. Day. Yeah, deprived. I yeah. love doing deprived playthroughs because they allow me so much freedom in my, my character creation. Yeah. So um, I'm not really slotted into anything. And with deprived, it's even it's so much worse in two than it is with any other game. Yeah, so that's fun. Yeah, it's uh. But Bloodborne is my shit. I love Bloodborne so much. I have never played it. Really? Yeah, I don't have a PlayStation. So. Uh, uh, ah, makes sense. I play it at my friends. I don't have one either, but I play it so much my friends' place. It probably, probably <laughs> feels like I own it. Yeah, I've, I've only played. Wait, 
I play Shadow Classes on PS4, my friend's one. But that's, that's the only one I've played. Like a PlayStation exclusive. Yeah. I can't think... Oh. Yeah. No, no, you, you go. No, I'm just thinking... Um, But no, I think in general... Um, I wonder if PC RPGs are going to be making a huge comeback soon. Because, like, looking at the lit, like, Obsidian Entertainment and how... So everyone's like, oh, Fallout 76 was shit, and I don't, oh. we don't want that anymore. <laughs> and everyone's going like, oh, Outer Worlds is really good. That's actually a good game. That's a good RPG. I Outer Worlds was rated pretty, like, okay, wasn't it? It was, like, medium sort of rated there. Yeah, but, like, the, the switch between, like, Bethesda to Obsidian, and I think, uh -huh. pe I think people are slowly realizing just how bad um because i think stuff like steams began to really popularize getting old games yeah. i think they're actually beginning to realize like just how bad stuff like fallout um for falls writing is yeah yeah i'm i'm in games for like i'll forget about all the gimmicks of like massive open worlds and focus more on just quality mm. on a smaller scale having yeah. more more massive characters and better writing more less quests but better ones oh, i hope that's the future of, of rpgs yeah i think yeah i think you got the right idea which is just like you we do not need uh constant mm. grand epic stories yeah we just need very well written ones yeah i don't need like to have a political conspiracy uh, um which is kind of what i'm hoping with cyberpunk which is it's not going to be like this super um, linear path and it's not going to be like uh -huh. we get to this grand scale of things but the stories they do tell are just really w well written yeah 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 because uh yeah because honestly with rpgs i i'm a big uh quality over quantity dude like yourself i don't i don't yeah, play... I, I don't play that many games yeah but i only play <laughs> i only play good ones basically i don't have time for the mediocre Stuff yeah, I, I have limited money, so I do not buy anything that I yeah, don't yeah. know is good. I think I pirate most of my stuff. <laughs> and on that note, we do not pirate anything at the GDG. We are completely legal. We have no... We do not do anything wrong at all. Just a disclaimer. For our safety. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah, I think... Yeah. I think in general, like when you become a student, you start, you start going for more quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think this is a good place to wrap up for now. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for coming. Yeah, all good. Yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, having Thanks for hosting. Yeah, and I hope everyone's gonna have a lovely day. And remember, safe, uh, stay safe in quarantine. All right. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.